Hi besties, welcome back to the channel. It's me, Gigi, and it's Saturday, and we are not going to do a shitty horror movie review today. I'm really sorry, um, but I have a good reason. So um, this week, I've been super busy trying to get um, content made for the other channel uh, because my daughter, as you probably already know if you're a friend to either of my channels, is about to pop a baby. And as we speak, she's actually at the hospital. So I knew that she was gonna be going there this morning and I just could not sit still to watch a scary movie. I did, however, sit down and watch Wonder Woman. And I was able to get that done because I was just really so keyed up to watch it. And honestly, I, I am still kind of bummed I watched it on my computer, which does not have the best or biggest monitor. But after I watched the movie, I was honestly kind of okay with it. Um, let's go ahead and dive into my thoughts on this. Um, okay, so Wonder Woman 1984, let's, let's get the details out of the way. That'll help me form my thoughts. It is um, written... Uh, and directed by Patty Jenkins, although also, also, why am I not seeing this here? I was just on it. I'm telling you, I am telling you right now. Oh, here, I must have clicked something. I must have clicked a button. Uh, along with Patty Jenkins, we have Jeff Johns and Dave Callahan, who helped write it. And the movie stars, of course, Gal Gadot as Wonder Woman, Chris Pine, Kristen Wiig, and Pedro Pascal. In a role, dude was born to play this shit, okay? Um, there are things I like about the movie. There are a lot of things I did not enjoy. Uh, the very opening of the movie, the thing that everyone's already seen on the commercials, is that little opening with, the, with young Diana. That's maybe my absolute favorite part of the movie. From there, everything kind of, it's a roller coaster. Because after we leave young Diana and we head into the 80s, the movie becomes like a bad TV show from the 80s. I, I get that we are visiting the decade and things are not going to be uh yeah the 80s sucked you guys i don't know what else to say to you the 80s sucked lived through the 80s did not love the 80s um but the movie it's the 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 quality of what you're seeing felt like it was made in the 80s and it, i was really having a hard time getting past the cheese factor. It's kind of like you have two things, they're delicious, okay? You've got lasagna, it's good. I, I actually don't like lasagna, but you might. Uh, and over here you have like pastry. I love pastry. But let's say instead of making lasagna with lasagna ingredients, you made it with pastry ingredients. And instead of cooking like pastry cooks, it cooks like lasagna. So the inside is doughy and chewy and way too sweet. That's how this movie felt to me. Like they were putting the right ingredients together in the wrong dish. There are parts of the movie I really enjoyed. Um, and other parts that... I don't understand how somebody thought this shit was going to work. Okay. Now this was in the in in the trailer and it honestly this thing in the trailer is one of the things that made me feel like uh oh maybe I'm not going to like this that much and it's the clothes montage. Um That was not funny. None of those jokes landed and then it was almost like Like, Patty Jenkins just needed to make a statement about 80s fashion, and so she did it through this montage. Okay, fine, whatever. And, of course, everything Diana wears looks more current and modern, even though, like, she's got the sleeves pulled up on her jacket, but the cut and, and style of the jacket is really modern. Okay, everything she's wearing is gorgeous. Everyone else looks like they came from the 80s. So... 
that really bothered me a lot as well. Um, Kristen Wiig, even though she was in 80s style clothes, as she started to progress, she just got hotter and hotter. Which, why every time, why does hotness equate to evil power? What, what is that even? <sighs> There's so many cliches in this movie that it really, really pulled me out of the story over and over and over. And the action was really hit and miss for me. When you're watching a movie like this, the action can either make it or break it for you. And for me, a lot of times it broke it. Like that first scene where she is breaking up that ring of dudes doing whatever they're doing. Um, it didn't look well done, right? Like she kind of looked like a Barbie doll dressed in as Wonder Woman swinging through grabbing people and stopping stuff. So the action itself really pulled me out of it. And like there's this scene where they're in Egypt and that's another thing which I've seen some conversations on it about it on on Twitter. Um, but we'll get to that. <clears throat> There's a scene where <coughs> oh, sorry guys, uh, we had some rain last night. I think it kicked some mold up because like my whole respiratory is ick. Okay, I almost said a different word and it was gross, so I'm not gonna say it. Uh, anyways, um, they're they're. She's trying to catch up to Pedro Pascal's character, Max Lord, and um, stop him, right? Because he is this wish master, okay? Um, there's this stone that he turned himself into the stone. He wished to be the stone, and the stone gives grants your wishes, which is how um, Steve Trevor comes back. She wishes for him, and that's another thing I had a problem with. Um but the scene itself, let's get back to the action. The scene itself, she's got to save these little kids playing in the street. It was literally the most bubblegum ass shit I have ever seen. It's like, oh, kids, get out of the road. How will Diana save you at the very last second? I'm getting kind of tired of that kind of shit. And... The, the stuff that Patty Jenkins did in the first Wonder Woman movie really transcended that cheese factor. It, she took it to a new place. And I wish she had stayed in that place and not reverted back to these fucking bullshit Hollywood tropes. Okay. So, the Steve Trevor thing. He comes back because she... She doesn't even know she's wishing for it. That's the one thing that really upset me. She goes, I know what I'd wish for. Because they're holding this rock. Her and Kristen Wiig are looking at it. Diana reads what it says on there. And it says something about granting a wish. So she, Kristen says, I don't even know what I would wish for. Her name is actually Barbara in the movie. Barbara Minerva. And Diana says, I know. And she's holding it. And you see the ruffling of the hair. So wind. Wind is how the wishes come true, which, again, another, another little thing I could have lived without. It would have just been, I guess it made for a nice end scene in a way, but whatever. Um, so she wishes for Steve to come back, and then all of a sudden, this rando guy starts following her. She's like, I don't know you, dude. I don't know you. The way they had Steve Trevor come back was not Steve Trevor coming back. His soul now inhabits. He's, he is uh, possessing a dude, right? Dude needs an exorcism from Steve Trevor now. This dude can't consent to having sex with Diana, which, of course, who wouldn't? But he can't. His body is being used so that Diana can reunite with her old boyfriend and they can get goody-goody in his bed. But this is somebody else's freaking body. And that shit is never really addressed. It was gross. I did not fucking like that. 
And the other, the other thing I said I'd mention is this thing about Egypt and the wall and trying to get the heathens and the infidels out of, out of their land. What exactly are you trying to say with that? I mean, my only real problem with choosing Gal Gadot as Wonder Woman is that she's a Zionist. So, not to take this into too much of a political area, but I feel like the movie has drug us there with their commentary on the situation in that part of the world. I, I don't really need it rubbed into my face that Gal Gadot is pro the annihilation of the Palestinian people. I just really don't need that. And honestly, though, maybe I should, maybe I do need it because maybe I shouldn't be watching these movies because I'm definitely anti-Zionist. I don't believe that what's going on over there is okay. And it's almost like they're trying to use Wonder Woman as a way to excuse the bullshit that's going on over there. And I don't like that. Okay. So my favorite part of the movie, let's just get back to that, is Kristen Wiig and Pedro Pascal. First of all, I don't see Kristen Wiig as a villain. I see her as a woman who's been denied, largely through her own action, been denied the life that she wants. And she doesn't see how her own attitude and her own lack of confidence has driven her life to be what it is. Um, but as soon as she wishes to be like Diana, the whole world pays attention to her. And that is a very addictive and heady cocktail to drink. So I totally get her character. And Pedro, he's the same. He's lived a life where he has been a loser always. And everyone that he has wanted to impress, which wanting to impress people is a huge waste of time, uh, have laughed in his face and basically told him he's a failure and not worthy of their time. And so I get his character as well. And the, the arc that he has from loser to villain back to caring, understanding father, I, I liked that arc. I thought it was really interesting. And had that been done in a more... cohesive movie in a in a better told story I would have enjoyed it a lot more I in, I understood everyone mostly because I I don't get how Diana was just suddenly okay with fucking some dude's body just because Steve Trevor was in there and I get she misses her boyfriend and I'm not saying I wouldn't have made a similar choice Actually, I hope I wouldn't have made that choice. But she's lonely because she won't let herself love anyone but Steve. And she has romanticized who he is while only knowing him through a very narrow set of circumstances. So, honestly, this movie is just an act. Uh, it, honestly, it is just... A character study of people who don't let themselves have what they really want and then end up hurting other people to get it. And even though Diana, it seems like she didn't hurt anybody to get what she wants, she hurt her own character. She did. And in my eyes, she's less wonderful now than she was before that happened, before she used some rando guy's body to reunite with her dead boyfriend. <sighs> okay. This is not a shitty horror movie review, so we're going to go to the 1 to 10 scale. I kind of try to keep the 1 to 5 scale for shitty horror movie review. I'm going to give this movie a 5. Honestly, part of me wants to go 4.5. I, I don't love it. And it really saddens me to say that because... I love the first Wonder Woman movie and I love her role in the Justice League movie and her introduction in BVS. Um, 
and I feel like this was a full letdown. Like, like Patty Jenks, Jenkins and Gal Gadot had some shit to say, so they crafted a movie around their message. And I can live without that shit. So... That's my take on Wonder Woman 1984. Let me know in the comment section if you agree or disagree with me. Uh, and let's have, a, let's have a conversation about it. I'm down with that. Thank you so much. Next week we will... I, on, guys, I got to keep it kind of open. Because my daughter is supposed to have a baby today. Uh, we're, she's working on that right now. And once she gets home and settled, I am going out to Vegas. So if there's time to sit down and watch a, a really awesome movie or a really bad movie, whatever, I will come and talk to you about it no matter what. But if there's not, then I will just maybe come and do a little update for you guys next weekend or what, what ha whatever happens, okay? Guys, thank you so much for watching. We will see you next time. Have a wonderful day. I hope you had a Merry Christmas. Bye-bye.